and rattlesnakes and really any of the venomous snakes are somewhat common in Texas. But they're very the first step is to locate these snakes, and this is always a likely spot here. And we need to collect the snakes out in the wild. And it's very important that we know where these snakes came from, what locale they came from, because venom varies all over the United States. So we want to find out where these snakes came from. We can see one that's right here in this log. This is a likely spot for these guys. They like to come in, they like to hide. They don't really come out till nighttime. So we're gonna pull this log apart just a little bit. I want to stick my hand under there in case there's more in here. Oh, that's a nice one too. It's a Western Diamondback. And we'll pull him out here. That's a nice male. We're gonna put him into the can. And this is gonna be the first step in a long process of what we do at the NTRC. Collect the snakes. We know where they come from. We're gonna collect venom from this guy and he'll become part of the collection. And we do this all over the United States and all over the world. Hi, Ruben Olagi here with Dimensions. The Natural Toxins Research Center here at Texas A&M University, Kingsville, is using components of snake venom to counteract the leading causes of death in the United States. The center is seen as a hidden gem in biomedical research. This is why. Established by the Texas A&M University System Board of Regions in 2004, the center has brought in about $30 million in research funds. It has had continuous support from the National Institutes of Health since 1973. In retrospect, Hardly anyone could have imagined measuring the resistance of a wood rat to snake venom would turn out to be such an incredible scientific discovery. But it was, as Dr. John Perez, an assistant professor then, began the long quest to research links between the properties of the venom and their potential to cure human disease. Uh, I didn't believe him. <laughs> and so when we tested that wood rat, uh, it was 141 times more resistant than white mice. So we started calling that the super mouse, or super rat. And, and this was a major discovery. You know, we were the first to report this. And th this changed my whole career. Pérez, son of a Spanish immigrant, found snake venom to be an astoundingly indefatigable army of molecules which offered promise. And uh, then as we started studying the venom, we thought, oh my gosh, the venom is more interesting than the rat because there's so many different molecules in there and uh, that could have potential in medicine for strokes, cancer, and heart attacks. But continuing research for the treatment of cancers, strokes, and heart attacks requires commitment and support. So that's already a fibrin clot that you're doing and you're using the venom to dissolve it? Yes, okay. correct. The NTRC, considered one of the most advanced investigative venom research sites in the world, benefits from its close alliance with biomedical education at A&M Kingsville. Bettis has been able to draw upon a dedicated base of professors and just as importantly, students. One of them is Esteban Cantu, who explains okay, so here a test in which human blood coagulation uh, well, reacts to a venom component. Once, uh, once the sample is added, you can close it and you can start the test in which the the plasma starts to react normally and what happens is that the coagulation process begins and this machine starts to measure the resistance it feels as a signal. This signal is then interpolated into this graph which can then be used to determine the, how the venom affects the coagulation process. What this really means is that students here have a unique opportunity do research as it is done in world-class corporations. The nature of the work we're doing is so unique that it stands out uh, from other institutions in the country. The second aspect of this research is the way we do the research. This research really gives both our undergraduate and graduate students a unique experience in working hands-on with both scientists and, and the subject of the snakes. This has been a great honor for me because no other institution would allow me as an undergraduate to conduct research on such a on such a professional level 
and also allow me to uh, be included on publications. For example, I have a, I, I've been included on three publications already as an undergraduate, and that is simply unheard of, you know, for the most part. The new NTRC building, which opened last year, is better known as the Viper Center. It houses 450 snakes and 25 different species. And that simple math lies extraordinary potential to save lives. We certainly have molecules that prevent clot formation. Uh, but just because we can do it in vitro and because we can do it in mice does not mean that it's going to work in you. Completely defining the venom, uh, that's what we're about. We're uh, about trying to define this venom to determine what useful molecules are. And that will probably take the rest of my lifetime and beyond just to help define the venom. In addition to the venom research performed here, the center has had an important role addressing a more traditional implementation of its service, providing antidotes. While only 12 people die from snake bites every year in the United States, centers in Brazil and Thailand concentrate their work on powerful antivenoms, as segments of their population are at higher risk of snake bites. Basically, we, we always try to remain calm. Curator Doug Huddle, a veteran of the snake world, shows us one of six bites he's had to overcome in his career. Each is a constant reminder that research constantly evolves. At the NTRC, oh, yeah. that means finding ways to turn a poison into a cure. So although these snakes can be menacing and very misunderstood, they do play an important part out in nature, and they play an important part for us in our future uh, as mankind. For Dimensions, I'm Ruben Olaghi.